Welcome to Find the Answers. I'm Elena and I'm a librarian at the Gerstein Science Information Center. In this tutorial, we'll talk about different types of medical questions and use resources you can access through the Gerstein page to answer background questions from a clinical scenario. In your practice, different types of questions will come up. These questions can be characterized as either background questions or foreground questions. Foreground questions address specific clinical and research problems. Other tutorials in this series will address clinical and research questions. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing on answering background questions. Background questions are basic fact-finding ones. What is a certain condition? How do I properly diagnose it? How is it different from a similar disease? You can also think of these as textbook questions. Sometimes Wikipedia is the fastest place to find answers to these questions but e-texts like Harrison's will often have better information that is written more appropriately for you, the medical student. This is the scenario we'll be working with. A student is on their first round of clinical observations in a hospital. Hey Julia, it's nice to meet you. I understand you want to get a sense of the kinds of problems we see on inpatient general medicine. Maybe a good way to start would be for you to follow Mr. Rodriguez with us today. He came in last night and it looks like he has pulmonary renal syndrome with glomerulonephritis. I think you'd find it very interesting. Glomerulo who? Okay, Julia. Act like you're understanding. Sure, this is proliferative GN, maybe good pasture syndrome. We'll be starting high dose immunosuppression with intravenous methylprednisolone and cyclophosphamide. Oh, I wish I'd stayed awake during those renal lectures last week. What do you think? Um, sure. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the disease or the treatment. There are always new cases and we can't memorize everything. You just need to have the skills to rapidly answer the questions that come up. So some of the questions that come out of this scenario are, what is glomerulonephritis? How do I identify a case? These are both examples of background questions. The answers are established. Let's start with, what is glomerulonephritis? It will be helpful if you have the Gerstein site open so if possible, go to library.utoronto.ca slash Gerstein. Start at the Gerstein homepage. If you don't have a specific resource in mind, go to the medicine starting point. From here, look at the encyclopedia section. For a basic definition, you can always go to a dictionary. We have Stedman's Medical Dictionary at U of T. Let's click on it and accept the terms and conditions. In Stedman's, we can simply type in the term we're looking for, glomerulonephritis, and press enter or search. The definition appears as well as definitions for related terms. So we learn that there are many classes or types of glomerulonephritis. This opens another set of questions about the different types of glomerulonephritis and how you can distinguish between them and other conditions that have similar presentations in clinical situations. To get a more detailed overview of a disease or condition, let's go back to the medicine starting point and look in Harrison's online. The online version of Harrison's has the advantage over the paper version in that it's more frequently updated and is full text searchable. In the search box at the top, type glomerulonephritis. The first hit is from a diagnosis tool and the second is to a figure, neither of which we're ready for yet but the third takes us to the section of the chapter on glomerular diseases where our search term is first mentioned. Let's click through. In the chapter, every time our search term is mentioned, the word is read so our eyes can jump right to that spot. At the top of the page, we learn that glomerulonephritis is an inflammation of the glomerular capillaries. Further down, we can learn about the how and why of glomerulonephritis and see what it looks like. On the left-hand side of the screen, there are links to the next sections in this chapter. From here, we can go on to learn about the progression of glomerular disease and the approach to the patient, including which tests to run and how test results can inform your diagnosis. You may find it easier, rather than starting with a search in Harrison's, to browse the table of contents. If you go back to the front of Harrison's, you can scroll through the table of contents or do a control F search or command F on a Mac of the page. Start typing G-L-O-M 
and when you run the search, you're taken to a link to the chapter on glomerular diseases. You can start with the introduction. Harrison's is just one of the ebooks available at U of T. Most of them work this same way with tables of contents browsing and full text searching. Back at the medicine starting point, we have a few more listed and they're all searchable in the main library catalog and e-resources catalog as well. There are also drug resources among the e-encyclopedias. Below e-encyclopedias are the text collections. In books at Ovid, there are 371 and counting texts, mostly practical clinical texts. You can find all of these in the library's catalog or go into them individually, but you can also search them all at the same time. Let's look in 5-Minute Clinical Consult, or 5MCC. This book gives you a very brief summary of what a condition is, how to diagnose it, and how to treat it. In the search box, type glomerulonephritis. The first hit is for the entry on acute glomerulonephritis. To go into the entry itself, click Ovid Full Text. This entry is typical of 5MCC. A lot of information about a condition is presented, from symptoms to tests to treatment, but with very little detail and in point form. To review, questions can be categorized as either background or foreground. In this tutorial, we answered background questions about glomerulonephritis using Stedman's Medical Dictionary, Harrison's Online, and 5-Minute Clinical Consult, part of Books at Ovid here at U of T, and accessed them all through the Medicine Starting Point on the Gerstein page. I hope this helped you get started with your background questions. In other tutorials in this series, we'll find the answers to clinical and research questions.